welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again and seeing what we're up to. Now, my name is Richard Saunders, and the rifle that we have on the on the uh, bench today is a Rexamex rifle. And although the company was only formed in 2015, I believe, they have a huge catalog of rifles, and they all represent you know, good quality, affordable performance. This rifle, the Rexamex Zone, is a little bit different in that it has a, uh, a regulator in it, which sets it out from sort of the rest of the, or many of the other Rexamex rifles and most other um, Turkish rifles as well. Now it's distributed in the UK by Range Right, and there are several different versions of it in terms of stock finish. You can either get this very attractive, I think, um, black synthetic stock, or you can get Turkish walnut, and you can also get a, a Sahara sand synthetic, a flat dark, flat dark earth synthetic, and a green synthetic as well. And prices are around about £500 to £530, uh, based on which version of the stock that you get. Now, it's a full-size rifle. It measures 890 millimeters long, weighs about 3.3 kilos. That's without a silencer and without a scope. And yeah, it's very obviously um, a bullpup. Now, the 177 version, which is what this is, uh, has a 14-shot magazine. The 22 has 12 shots, and the 25 caliber has 10 shots. And it's available, obviously, in 12 for pounds for the UK market. But it's also available in FAC uh, levels as well. I think it's 19 foot pounds for 177, 36 foot pounds for 22, and 41 foot pounds uh, in 25 caliber. Um, but overall, yeah, it's a really nice on the surface, really nice, compact, well made rifle. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look through it from back to front as we normally do. Then we'll zoom in on some of the key features, uh, talk about the whole magazine filling process air filling process as well and they will end up on the range down at Reading Air Target Shooting Club to give it a shoot. So the Rexamex Zone is very obviously uh, a bullpup rifle and it's uh, a traditional bullpup in the sense that it has the cocking handle right uh, at the back here just forward of the, of the shoulder pad and most modern bullpups or later bullpups have a cocking handle in the middle. Now, you'd have thought on the face of it that that would make cocking the rifle a little bit awkward. But having spent some time with it on the range, it's really quite easy and you very quickly get used to it. You just have to train your mind to remember to cock back here as opposed to halfway down the rifle. Um, but yeah, very quickly uh, you get into a rhythm uh, of cocking and shooting with it. Now, at the back, you have a, a solid rubber shoulder pad. There is vertical adjustment for it. You push this button in here and then the, the butt pad slides up and down. It's not the most sophisticated system in the world, but you know it's very, very solid. There's a number of preset positions and as you move the shoulder pad up and down, the button will pop out and lock it into place. And to be honest, it's the sort of thing that once you've done it once, you'll probably never touch it ever again. On top here, you have a, a cheek piece which uh, just makes the rifle more comfortable to put up to your face. And it's ambidextrous, so it works both sides. And it looks like the, the side lever can be swapped from the right-hand side to the left-hand side as well, making this a completely ambidextrous rifle. The breech is just here, and we'll show you how the magazine goes in in a, in a minute or two. And then down below, you have this really large cutout that will accommodate the biggest of hands. And you can't really shoot with a thumb up grip, but wrapped around it's very comfortable. The pistol grip itself doesn't have a whole bunch of contours in it. There's a little shelf up here to kind of channel your, tr your trigger finger and your thumb. And there is some stippling on, on here as well. The, um, the trigger itself is a post and shoe trigger. And it's four way adjustable, which basically means that it has all the usual adjustments plus the ability to change the position of this uh, shoe on the post. And to be honest, like I find on most rifles, to be fair, um, straight out of the box, it was set just fine for me. There's a nice smooth first stage, comes to a, a very pronounced stop, and then lets off with a little bit more pressure on the second stage. There's a little bit of creep, but yeah, not too much to be perfectly honest. And it's, yeah, it's a good trigger, especially when you bear in mind the price point for this rifle. Now, forward of that, you have a, um, 
the fore end here it has these kind of m lock slots on it um but you know this fore end is more polymer it's not metal and then on this side you have where is it just up here forward of the breech you have a power adjuster it works by taking off the the transfer port and you know, power adjusters are, are a great idea it gives you a little bit of flexibility but in my experience most people tend to use um, their rifle at the full 12, pe 12 foot pounds and even people who've got power adjusters on uh, FAC rifles turn it up to the max and leave it there but you know if you are shooting um, in a barn or in the garden or something and you want to turn the power down you at least have that option and then just forward of that there is a, a pressure gauge here which gives you an indication of the regulator pressure now that gauge shouldn't change at all the reg pressure on this 12 foot power rifle is set at 100 bar and really you don't want to see that needle moving at all it's there really just to indicate if there's some kind of issue with the rifle so if you see the needle going down or going up more importantly then you need to have the rifle looked at by a uh, by, by a professional gunsmith obviously FAC rifles the regulator pressure is set that much higher anyway now on top again you have this nice long Picatinny dove rail uh, Picatinny scope rail um, lots of room there for you to put a scope of just about any size on it and <clears throat> as I say you know it's a 22 millimeter uh, Picatinny the the barrel with the shroud measures about 700 millimeters so there's this is quite a short rifle at what 890 millimeters the barrel is almost the entire length or the barrel and the shroud is almost the entire length of the rifle now i don't know exactly where the barrel stops inside this shroud um you know you can remove the shroud if you remove the uh, this cap on the end and this and the half inch unf uh, adapter but i didn't want to start breaking someone else's gun basically the shroud is about half length of the barrel uh, it does a very good job actually of, of making this quite a quiet rifle to shoot without an extra silencer but if you do want to put a silencer on then you have that option by taking this cap off the end here and popping a silencer straight onto the half inch UNF. Now the air cylinder is uh, 260 cc's very easy to fill there's a cap on the front here that pulls off and a probe goes in we'll show you that and then there's a, uh, a pressure gauge on the end there to tell you what your overall uh, fill pressure is. Now, the maximum fill on this is 250 bar. And I couldn't find any um, shot count statistics for this rifle. But I was getting around about 120, 130 shots uh, from this 177 rifle. I think that's pretty much all of the key points. So what we'll do now is we'll zoom in on a few of those in closer detail before we take it down at the range and have a shoot. neglected to say before uh, that the safety catch is integrated within the trigger guard there's a little catch just up here hopefully you can see that now push through to the to the right to this side the rifle is safe and then to make the rifle live you just need to push it across to the left um, and uh, that obviously releases the trigger now loading the magazine on the zone is very straightforward you get two of these magazines and they're plastic uh, but very good quality and hopefully you can see on this clear faceplate there is a an arrow pointed in the clockwise direction and that indicates that you need to first of all just rotate this faceplate all the way around as far as it will go clockwise um, against the spring if you let go 
then it'll just flip back again. So just rotate that round as far as it will go clockwise and just hold that face plate to start with and drop a pellet into the first hole. Put your finger behind the hole at the back, behind the back here, otherwise the pellet will fall all the way through. And then that will then hold that yellow drum against the spring. And then it's just simply a case of rotating that face plate back anti-clockwise and dropping a pellet into each of the chambers as they're exposed. Now they drop in nice and, and cleanly, but you just need to make sure that the pellet is all the way in the chamber before you rotate the faceplate so you don't crush the edge of the pellet on the faceplate. The 177 takes 14 shots, the uh, 22 takes 12, and the 25 takes 10 shots. And as you can probably see on the inside of the yellow drum here, each of the chambers is numbered. So you can tell how many shots you've got left if you have good eyesight, basically. Now, once you put all, all 14 or 12 or 10 pellets into the, into the magazine, just realign that faceplate at the top there, and then it's ready to go into the breech. Now, the one thing with this magazine is that when it's empty, the side lever will pull back and there'll be a click, but it won't go forward. So it will tell you when you've taken your last shot and it's time to take the magazine out and refill it again. And we'll show you how to put the magazine into the breech just now. So I've taken all the pennants out of the magazine because I'm indoors and I want to be nice and safe. But it doesn't really matter for the purpose of showing you how to install the magazine into the breech. Um, so first thing to do is the, this clear plastic faceplate needs to face you as you're looking down the rifle. And then hopefully on the reverse you can see on this black side there's this ridge that runs down the middle of the magazine. This, is the, this side of the magazine, the black side, is what you want facing the muzzle. And you'll need to ensure that that ridge aligns with a, a slot in the front of the breech just here. And also ensure that this flat part of the magazine at the bottom sits flat on the bottom of the breech just here. So first task is to make sure the rifle is safe. Then pull back the side lever as far as it will go and leave it open. And then aligning that slot that, uh, that ridge into the slot. Just push the magazine from the left, left side as far as it will go and then return the side lever. Now the side lever won't return because the magazine is empty. It has this sort of dead stop function on it but with pellets in it you just close the magazine up and then you'd be uh, ready to shoot. So the air filling process is nice and simple. You get as part of your kit a, where are we, a filler, a filler probe this silver bit here is an aftermarket foster fit attachment and makes life a lot easier. And all you'll need to do is just pull off this cap, this collar from the front of the cylinder and that exposes the fill port just here. And then it's a, a simply a case of putting the, the probe into the fill port. It doesn't go in a, a, a really long way to be honest, but push it in as far as it will go and then obviously attach your uh, compressor, your air bottle, your stirrup pump or whatever and give the rifle uh, a maximum fill of 250. I've been filling it to around about 230 and getting sort of 130, 140 shots from it. Then once you've finished, uh, obviously bleed off the line from your pump compressor bottle, pull out the probe once again and then put this, this collar back over the front at the cylinder where it's held on with an o-ring nice and securely. So that's a quick rundown on the key features on the Rexamic zone. The weather is awful and the forecast isn't great so it might be a few days before I get down to the uh, the range at Reading Air Target Shooting Club but that's where we'll go next. So here I am then back down at uh, Reading Air Target Shooting Club with the Rexamic zone. I've set a target out at 30 metres and I'm using uh, JSB Exact Diablos, they're the uh, 177 8.44 grain pellets. It's a little little bit blustery today. The wind is left and right, then it's right to left and it stops and it picks up again. But uh, those are my excuses. Let's see how we get on.
think this is the last shot. Yep, nice shot. What? A little bit thrown around. And let's go and have a look. Right, let's have a look. Didn't help that the tiger became untethered at the bottom halfway through. Um, but I would say that's probably 12 pellets through less than a thumbnail. One a little bit lower, one a little bit higher. As I say, it is a little bit blustering around here. And the tiger is sort of flapping around halfway around because it came undone at the bottom. But there you go. Um, yeah, that's not too bad at all, I don't think. That's 30 metres with uh, JSB Exacts 8.44 grain. Well, there you go. That is the Rexamex zone. Like all the Rexamex rifles, really, really good value for money, especially as this one is regulated. Nice side lever, nice, uh, nice trigger too, plenty of shots. Um, yeah, really nice rifle. Um, probably outshoots a lot of rifles that cost more, to be perfectly honest. But anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button and also subscribe. It really does help us out. And don't forget to check out our website, alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.